So let's say we have this aqueous solution, and let's say in this aqueous solution we have two molar of this ammonium, and let's say we have one molar of this ammonia. So I'm trying to draw them in equivalence. But again, let's say we have this solution. This is a buffer solution. Why is this a buffer solution? Well, whenever you have a solution with a weak acid and you also have its conjugate base, then you have a buffer solution. And that's just something you just need to memorize. Whenever you have a solution with a weak acid and in that solution you also have that weak acid's conjugate base, then you have a buffer solution and this solution acts as a buffer. So if we have this buffer solution, how can we determine the pH of the solution? How can we determine the acidity of the solution? Well, we know if we have these ammoniums and these ammonias, we know they're going to react with water. They're going to protonate water and they're going to deprotonate water. And then they're going to reach an equilibrium where we have a certain hydronium ion concentration and equilibrium. And we know it's this hydronium ion concentration that determines the pH of the solution. We know that through this equation. The hydronium ion concentration is directly related to the pH of the solution. So therefore, if we were to somehow determine the hydronium ion concentration of the solution, we could determine the pH of the solution. However, there's another way to determine the pH of the solution. And whenever we have a buffer solution, which we do, we have a buffer solution. So whenever you have a buffer solution, there's another way to determine the pH of the solution. You can determine the pH of a buffer solution using this equation, which is referred to as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So the pH of a buffer solution equals the pKa of the weak acid plus the log of the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of the acids. And again, this is only true when we have a certain conjugate acid-base pair, so therefore we, we need that conjugate acid-base pair, so therefore if you know the pKa of the acid in that conjugate acid-base pair, and you know the concentration of that conjugate acid-base pair, the concentration of the base and the relative concentration of the acid, and use this equation, you can determine the pH of this solution. So how would we do that? How would we determine the pH of this solution using this Henderson-Hasselbalch equation? Well, again, remember the way this works. We need the pKa of the acid. We're specifically interested in the pKa of the acid in the conjugate acid-base pair. So the pKa of this ammonium happens to be 9.25. And then we add that to the log of the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of its conjugate acid. And again, we said, we said we had one molar of this guy and two molar of this guy, so we essentially have this ratio. We have this ratio of 1 over 2. So now if we were to solve this, we could solve the pH. We would have a pH roughly around 8.95. So we have a fairly basic solution. And now we've done it. Now we determine the pH of the solution. Now that we know the pH of the solution, we can determine the hydronium ion concentration. Really, essentially just using this equation. If we know the pH, we can determine the hydronium ion concentration using this equation. And with a little bit of simple algebraic rearrangement, we can use this equation. Now we plug in the pH of the solution, which again was 8.95, and we plug it in, and now we would get the hydronium ion concentration of roughly around 1 times 10 to the negative 9 molar hydronium ion concentration. So that's how this Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, but remember what you need. You need a weak acid, and you also need its conjugate base. And this represents the pKa of the weak acid, and then this is the log of the relative amount of the weak base relative to its conjugate acid, the concentration of its conjugate acid. So let's do another example just to really illustrate what's going on. Let's say we have this aqueous solution. Let's say we have this aqueous solution with three molar of these ammonia. What would happen if we added one molar of this hydrochloric acid? Well, to simplify it, instead of saying we have three molar of the ammonia and one molar of the hydrochloric acid, let's simplify it and scale it down, and let's say we have three atoms of this ammonia, and let's say we add one single atom of hydrochloric acid. What's going to happen? Well, we know the hydrochloric acid is going to protonate the base, one of these bases. And if we have three of these bases and we have one acid, then the acid's only going to protonate one of the bases. Only one of them is going to get protonated. And when we do that, we're essentially left with this solution, where again, we protonated one of the, one of the bases, so one of the bases is protonated now. And the other two bases, nothing happened to them. They, they remained unprotonated. So now we have this aqueous solution. And again, it, it's just the way the stoichiometry works and, and how many atoms th there were. So now we have this solution, and realize this is a buffer solution. We have a weak acid, and we also have its conjugate base. So whenever you have a solution with a weak acid and its conjugate base, you have a buffer solution. So now we, can do, we know we can determine the pH of this buffer solution using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And we know the pH of this buffer solution equals the pKa of the acid in the conjugate acid-base pair, plus the log of the concentration of the base, 
divided by the concentration of its conjugate acid. So if we were to do that, we'd essentially have this equation. We're getting the pK of this weak acid is 9.25. Then at C, we have essentially two equivalents of base for every one equivalent of acid. So again, we have two equivalents of base for every one equivalent of acid, so we have this ratio. So now we can solve the pH, and if we were to use this equation, we would get a pH of 9.55. So now we've determined the pH of this buffer solution is around 9.55. And again, that's how this henderson hausbach equation works. Now let's do another example. Let's say we have two molar of this acetic acid in the solution. And then let's say we added one molar of this hydroxide, the strong base, into the solution. What's going to happen? Well, again, we can simplify it by saying we have two atoms of this acetic acid and we add one atom of hydroxide. What's going to happen? Well, we know it's going to deprotonate its base, so it's going to deprotonate one of the acids. So one of the acids is going to get deprotonated and one's going to remain protonated. So we'd essentially create this, where again, one of them was deprotonated, so one of them was deprotonated, and one of them remained protonated. So again, now we have this buffer solution. Again, we would essentially have one molar of this acetate conjugate base, and we would have one molar of this acetic acid. And we have a buffer solution. We have a weak acid, and we also have its conjugate base. So now we can determine the pH of this buffer solution. And again, we explain how we do this. We do determine the pH of a buffer solution using this equation. As long as we know the pKa of the acid, the weak acid, we're interested in the pKa of the weak acid in the conjugate acid base pair. And we add that to the log of the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of its conjugate acid. So if we were to do that, we would have this equation, where the pKa of this acid happens to be 4.8. And then we add that to the log of the concentration, relative concentration of base relative to the concentration of acid. And we see we have a one-to-one -one ratio. We have one molar of the conjugate base and we have one molar of the acid. So we have a one-to-one -one ratio. So therefore, we would essentially have a log of zero. We would have the log of one. This would essentially be one. So we would do the log of one, which we know the log of one is zero. That, that's how logs work. The log of one is zero. So we're left with this equation. This just goes to zero, so we're left with this equation. So now we know the pH equals 4.8. But really, notice, so now we know the pH of the solution, but notice what's going on. Something important to take away from this is whenever the concentration of the base equals the concentration of the acid, whenever we have equal concentrations of, of base and acid, then we have a ratio of 1 over 1, so we have a ratio of 1, and the log of 1 is always 0. So therefore, this will always be zero. So this equation would essentially, this would always go to zero. So therefore, the pH would equal the pKa. And that's always true when we have a buffer solution and we have, e, we have, this, we have even amounts of base and acid. They, we have one molar of this guy and one molar of this guy. So we have even amounts of base, base and acid. Then we know we have even amounts. So this goes to one. So one of log is zero. So this goes to zero. So this can just be ignored. So now we know the pH equals the pKa. And that's true. So now we know the pH of the solution will equal equal the pKa of this weak acid. And we know this weak acid had a pKa of 4.8, so therefore we know the pH of the solution is 4.8. And again, that's just something you just need to be familiar with and memorize with the henderson hasselbalch equation. When you have even amounts of base and acid for a buffer solution, then the pH of the solution equals the pKa of the acid in that conjugate acid-base pair.